talking and he just will all of a sudden we're in the middle of the episode. That's okay. real weird. Welcome back to Podcast the Hero. <laughs> we've absolutely done it. We've described what happens and we've started the episode. Uh, this episode is brought to you by, uh, as always, by Cornbot. While you were all freaking out about microchips in your COVID vaccines, you weren't paying attention to the corn bots inside your Orville Redenbachers. Guess what? You're all infested now. Enjoy. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by our Patreon supporters, uh, Rick, Davy P, and my mom actually signed up, Phi, uh, Common Thread, Evan, Zane, Rody Loves My Dink, and Robert Anxiety, <laughs> not Robert Anxiety, those are two different people, uh, Deconomist, Matt, Mushy, Zach, Kane, The First Dan, uh, KH Pandas, Cornman, Jeffrey, Mason, TBJ, Anthony, Yuri, Nick, Fruit Punch Samurai, Ashwin, and High Tops. All right. Our guest today was born different than other children. He could walk, run, and swim, but gods be praised, he could fly upon the single kick pedal like few others ever could. This unusual skill caught him in, got him in many sticky situations. It left him with one leg much more developed than the other. So, when he ran with the other children, he found himself running in circles. At first, he thought this to be strictly a disadvantage. But when the other children began to join him, he realized he was faster than the others. Soon they realized this behavior was best accompanied by the steady beat of a punk rock rhythm. And thus the circle pit was born, and Nick was the <laughs> king of them as long as they ran in a counterclockwise fashion. Our guest today, father of the circle pit, Nicholas Angelini. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that. That was the best intro I've ever heard from myself. Yes. It's brilliant. That was, that was fantastic. Well done, sir. Stream of consciousness. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to start off with uh, a weird thing. Cool. So my wife and your cousin, Paula... Mm -hmm. our internet friends that met through uh, the new kids on the block community, uh, like fan community. And I have to ask you, did you grow up as a new kids fan as well? We're uh, roughly in the same age bracket. They were kind of big in the eighties when we were kids. Yeah, I did. I did not grow up as a new kids on the block fan. You can believe that. Um, I can. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I did go see them recently, though. You I, did? Yeah, my girlfriend was actually, well, actually, she's my fiance now. Yeah. Oh. It's, hard to, it's hard getting used to the saying that word because it's kind of a kind of a Wait till you got to say word. wife. It's yeah. real hard. Okay. Yeah. But it's anyway, easier to say because it's less French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. French is tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On many levels. But anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> but yeah, so... I agreed to go see the new kids on the block because I thought, like, you know, they might have, like, a kick-ass, like, uh, like band, like, backing them up, you know? I thought they'd be, like, you know, like the gospel chops guy on drums and stuff, but no, yeah. no, it was nope. just, uh, just all tracks. Playback? Yep, yeah. all, all tracks. All tracks all day. Yeah, so... Can't I've, teach I've an old dog new tricks? Guy. Yeah. So I've that been that guy at the new kids show, uh, and my wife is, like, super fan, so it's, like, usually front row seats, and I'm, like the one dude towering over like a bunch of, you know, 30 to 40 year old women standing front row, staring Donnie Wahlberg <laughs> in the crotch. Um, yeah, at the new kids on the block concert, Fritzy is the old man on the porch. Yes. That's oh, yeah. Yeah, screaming at all of them to get off my fucking lawn. Right. Um, uh, anytime I go see you guys play, uh, you always have, uh, some snares at the merch table. Um, is that a huge pain in the ass to like travel with those? Yeah, it can be. I try to always get one on the plane without paying for it too. Like when we're up, we go overseas. Yeah. Carry it so I'm always like that guy with like two carry ons and I'm trying to like shove a snare drum in the <laughs> overhead. It's like a total like, like douche move. You know, somebody else is just like looking at me like you already have a bag up there. What are you doing? Trying to like shove another hard, 
brown case in there. What is even what even is that? You know? Yeah. Always those people but, uh, that are getting on the plane late and they like open the overhead compartment. They go, Are there two fucking snare drums in here? <laughs> Where does my bag go? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just, it's, it's, uh, just it's tell rough, them but... it's a liver and they'll leave you alone. Okay. They'll yeah, that's a good idea. Alone. Um I need <laughs> that's my liver case. Yeah. I gotta take it with me. I'm going for a special surgery in the Netherlands. Um, do you sell many of them at shows, or is it more for like, uh, hey, this is what I do if you want to work with me and order a custom thing? Um, I do sell them. Yeah. Um, sometimes it'll I'll sell a lot. Like, if we do like the states, and I have the trailer that I can kind of throw a bunch of drums in there, and it's no big deal. And uh, there's a few tours where I sold like three, three snares, and sometimes I don't sell any, but it's pretty consistent though. That's awesome. It is, like, yeah, usually like between bands, I'll go hang out at the merch table and just kind of chat with people and just kind of like spread the word so people know that I actually do make drums, you know? Yeah. That's yeah, so awesome. It's a, little bit, it's, it's a little bit of both. What does a snare cost at a merch booth? Uh, my snares, they're all different, but like my basic model starts at like 700 US. Yeah, so that's a little more than your standard customer at a merch table is thinking they're going to spend, but right, right. I'm sure, I'm sure you run into a couple yahoos that go, yeah, I need this in my life. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get those super fans, and they want like that thing that somebody from the band made, you know? And yeah, like I have to have it because yeah. that guy made it, which is because like it makes sense to know? spend that kind of money on a snare, right, or like a drum or anything like that, or an instrument. But like, I can't like I can't imagine going up to a merch booth and being like, "Oh, I'm gonna drop fucking almost a thousand dollars right now." <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I try to I try to like go on the you know, on the internet and say like, "Hey, I'm gonna have this drum for sale on the next True. like screen tour." So some yeah, people so can actually plan ahead for it. That's nice. That's smart. Yeah. Rody can't even they can't even sell their skate decks. Right. That's true. Well, that's because you've been skating them before you try to sell them, right? Well, that's also true. Like, we even signed them all up and tried to get rid of them. We had to buy them. We had to buy them from the company and just go, put them in a fucking storage container somewhere, man. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Have you, uh, when you, so you made your whole, your own kit, like the whole kit. um, Yeah. And you, like, I know you do, like, like do you can you make a kick drum stave like a stave kick drum or is that yeah 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 i've made um i've made about five kits now most of my business is is snare drums yeah um i've made probably i think i've like 185 drums now that i've made jesus and um but yeah like the, the kick drums take longer as you'd imagine but it's basically the same idea it's just just more materials and bigger bigger segments of wood and whatnot yeah that's pretty yeah. wild. Um, have you thought about steam bending? I learned about um, steam bending. Is yeah, that steam from bending the la- is pretty cool. Is that from the last Airbender? Yes. Avatar. Yep. Number it's not the water Netflix. bending or the air bending or the fire bending or the earth bending. It's the steam bending. Mm. I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, you got to watch like <laughs> season nine. Oh. Um, it just seems like a. a a very a cool idea but also like incredibly hard yeah i think it's a whole different whole different animal you know yeah you gotta get one of those boxes and the the steam and the fire and all that yeah that's the shit where you get the wood like kind of wet and steamy and then you just slowly sort of bend it and when you take the shit off it's all like bent yeah you make like a mold and then you you heat it up so it's pliable and then you bend it over the mold and then um sorry about the clock do you um, have a grandfather clock in there? <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my this is my girl's place. I'm I'm not in my normal uh, my normal zone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when I first heard it, I thought it was like uh, like bells out on a like a on a ship in the harbor. Yeah, we thought you were yeah. calling from like Dickensian England. <laughs> <laughs> the fog is all rolling in. <laughs> Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever considered just going into the woods and finding whole logs and just hollowing out the middle part? Yes. 
Come on. Actually, my no. Well, sir, well, my friend, uh, my friend Pete, he actually had this tree in his front yard forever, and he wants me to to take the log and make, you know, cut cut it into it. It's 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 it is doable. It's very difficult because when the wood dries out from like a wet tree, yeah. you know, a green tree, yeah. they tend to not. They tend to like check and crack and all that stuff, so it's kind of it's it's very challenging, and I don't really know how to do it. But I'm going to try to do it for him. So I'm going to get my chainsaw, take this stump, and like plunge cut into the middle of it, and kind of like do this all madness with a chainsaw, which is probably going to be very dangerous. And then um, leave it in the shop for like a couple of years, and then probably end up throwing a bunch of epoxy and all the cracks and shaping it. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. The, the, like yeah, and uh, I, there's going to be a, a thing about the the drummer from Wilhelm Scream only has one foot, <laughs> uh, like. Um, I like the idea that your you friend know? Pete just like sends you a picture of a tree and is like, "Hey Nick, I got a new kit for you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he always. I've made him a couple of drums in the past, and he always is trying to like take me to the next level. You know, he's like. I want you to do something you've never done before. And I'm like, oh, can't we just make something doable? <laughs> it's not going to be like, where I have to learn a whole new woodworking skill. <laughs> you got to buy but, new um, equipment. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, he's cool. He's, he's a sick drummer too. And he always, I do appreciate being pushed because like it, I end up coming up with like new stuff. Last drum I made for him was like three layers of wood. So it was one layer on the inside of the drum. The middle layer was a, a second wood and the outside was a, uh, a third type of species of wood. Wow. That was pretty cool. And it would be you know, pretty cool. I feel yeah. like, I feel like getting into woodworking is one of those things where like, you better really like it because like the equipment isn't cheap. The materials aren't cheap. And if you get into it and you're like, I'm totally going to get into woodworking now and you buy all the stuff and you start doing it and then you're like, eh, this sucks. I hate it. Like you're stuck <laughs> with fucking table saws and fucking all kinds of shit. Yeah. You also need a lot of patience too. It, it took me like, like to get consistent at actually making like a blank shell. It took me like a couple of years because I'd get like, I'd get one done and it would kind of be the right size because with stave shells, it's all these segments of wood. So if you're off by like a 64th of an inch, the whole thing will expand or shrink like a half an inch. So the next thing you know, you got like a 14 and a half inch drum and you can't like shave enough of the wood off to make it into the a regular size drum because right. you take too much off of it. And if the angles on the staves aren't perfect, then it has all these weird gaps in it. And it's just, I made a lot of like small pieces of firewood <laughs> earlier in my career. <laughs> yeah. I find that my wood only shrinks. It never expands. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, d d were you like in the high school marching band? Is that how you got into drumming? Like, or no. not at all? Like, not at all. Not I wanted way. to play punk rock music and I want to play drums. Yeah, my, my friends and I had a band before we uh, before I even had a drum set, so that was that was a you know that was pretty cool. And then uh, I ended up we ended up starting a really crummy punk band. Hell yeah! My junior high school it was pretty cool. We covered like like Fear and um, it was this like compilation called Faster and Louder, and uh, we did all like those OG like crusty punk songs, yeah. and that was then we like wrote our own crusty punk songs and. Yeah, that's kind of where I got started. I knew like two beats. It was like the surf beat and then the surf beat without two hits. And that's a, that was pretty much, yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> All you need. Yeah. I was going to say, there's not enough adult marching bands outside of New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans has like the lock on that. Huh? Yeah, they kind of yeah. do. Honestly, I think but there's you never, too like, many. You never like just driving around in a town somewhere and just like running into a marching band going down the street. With like a you know, you know drum drum section, the snare guys and the timpani guys and whatever marching down with the with horns. You just never run into marching bands anymore. Do you yeah. want that though? Yes. Is that what you want in your life? A hundred percent. I miss it. I don't it. think you do, man. I miss it. <laughs> so so when I was in college, I lived really close to where the 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 marching band practiced. 
And in the fall, on the weekends, you would hear the marching band like playing, or like in the afternoons, you'd hear the the uh, the the drum guys like practicing, and it was awesome. That sounds like a nightmare. It's oh, it's so good. On the you don't weekend, know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you, marching bands seen, all I've over the place. Line. They should be everywhere. I think I'd be into that. It's great. Yeah, I'm outnumbered here, but yeah. um, I know I know that I'm right. <laughs> well, I think in, I think in New Orleans you can really like you can you can pretty much pay like thirty bucks for a permit. And you can have a parade whenever you want. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah. So you can just like you be like by yourself with your drum and have your own little parade if you want. Yeah. Yeah. That, like that's a cool thing to go to and like be in that city and visit it and then go home to where it's quiet Mm-mm. outside of the chiming of the grandfather clock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but so yeah. you're a you're a single pedal you're a single pedal guy. Yeah, you yeah. only use the single kick. Um, um are you like I... Sorry, nope, go on. No, you go. I was oh, just going to say yeah. are, are you one of those fellas that's like uh, like super against the double kick pedal or is it just like you just do the single kick pedal because that's how it's always been well i used to be kind of like that like uh well well first I, I used to have a double bass pedal and uh, i would do like the uh the no effects thingy there but then mm-hmm. i broke the double bass pedal and then yeah. i never i never replaced it with uh with anything else i just ended up using, i had a single pedal after that so that's just what i used Mm. And then I became, I was kind of a snob for a while, admit it, you know, I was like the punk rock guy. I was like, you can't use double bass, you're cheating, bro, you know? Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I'm, I'm cool with double bass pedals now. I think if you're going to have a double bass, bass pedal, though, you should probably have like two kick drums, you know? That's pretty, oh. yeah, that's pretty sweet. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, what, no, no half, you know, no half stepping or whatever, you know, you want that. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, you know, go all the way, you're right? If you're being that, like, extra, you might as well be really extra. Yeah, you, know, you might as well be Tommy Lee. Right, right. Yeah, you better have Roto Toms on your kit. Right. And two, I listen to this, uh, two kick drums. <laughs> I was listening to like this. Uh, they did a, a drum nerd podcast about Van Halen. That dude, that dude threw some stuff on stage, man. Holy shit! He had like four kick drums, and he had these tubes that connected the kick drums, and they were like twenty eight inches tall and like thirty inches deep, and he had Roto Toms and all this crap. Like he wasn't, he wasn't screwing around. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like he really was screwing around. I guess you're right. Yeah, he was totally screwing around. I don't think he was screwing around too much, man. <laughs> yeah, was, I, I don't feel like I feel bad for his his roadie. Must have been like like wanting to kill himself after yeah day two. Oh you know? man, he breaking that kid party. down would be a nightmare. Yeah, he, he just wanted to go to the party, you know, and just he just can't find the case for the. Four 28 inch kick drums and <laughs> gotta unhook oh, all man. these tubes. Yeah, what do you do with the tubes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, look at hilarious. Yeah, I remember Paul from Silverstein used to have a shirt that had like a double kick pedal on it and it was crossed out. It was like, fuck that. You know, <laughs> like I remember oh, wow. seeing that and just being like, like I know that that is like kind of. In the punk drumming community, it's like there is a sort of idea that it's like, oh, don't use the double kick pedal because that's fucking dumb. But like, seems to me Silverstein should should embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if any band's gonna do it, it's probably Silverstein, right? Yeah, they do have that giant riser that they bring out to and everything. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, might as well. I feel like some of those breakdowns would benefit from some. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. There's no way to look cool while mimicking a fucking double kick pedal with your hands. (laughs) The best part about that is small dog treading water. When the when the episode gets edited and everything gets cropped out, that you won't even see your hands. It'll just be your arms going like wiggling a bit. (laughs) (laughs) Why is he making that face? (laughs) Um. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, do you do you agree that we should never have Brian on this show? I was actually thinking about that. He's not been on. Yeah, uh, and I we're considering intentionally never having him on and inviting everyone to tell him about it. Okay. <laughs> do you think that's a uh, probably a good plan? Uh, yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty good. I think it. Well, I don't know. I was thinking about that today. I was like, geez, you've had... Have you had Nuno on, too? Yep. We, we have, Nuno, yeah. Trev. 
Okay, yeah. Um, this is pretty bad. much ben. Wilhelm the podcast. Yeah, that's all he says. It's yeah. just us <laughs> talking yeah. Wilhelm. Yeah, I was wondering why he didn't get the Canadian guy like right off the bat, you know? And I've known Brian the longest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've known him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> like I talk to him after every time one of you guys is on here, like him and I are like chatting back and forth on Instagram and never once has <laughs> to come up to be like, you should do the podcast, man. <laughs> Don't even bring it up. If he brings it up, just like deflect. <laughs> so uh, what am I going to know? Oh, well, yeah, anyways. What are the full blasts yeah. getting back yeah. together? <laughs> <laughs> Um, how's it been with Ben? You guys, oh, yeah, getting along. Everything's cool with uh, adding in. I know, obviously when you're changing dynamics with new people coming in and stuff like that. Uh, but everything I know about Ben, uh, he seems like a pretty chill dude. Yeah, Ben's great, man. Yeah, uh, we, we call him uh, Big Ice. Mm. I don't know if he told you that. Yeah, no. Ben Big Ice Murray. <laughs> like big ass or big ice? Ice, ice. Yeah. Oh. What's the significance yeah. of that? Chew a lot of dentine well, ice? No, he um he likes uh he every time he orders a coffee he's like, you know, uh, ice coffee, extra ice, extra and, like, ice. Some, extra. We're on yeah, and we were <laughs> we were on tour and some lady's like, oh, look at big ice over here, <laughs> like just some random barista. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's now uh, he's now big ice. I love That's him. hilarious. Yeah, no, but Ben Ben's great man. He's he's a character and he's just he's. He like nailed all the old guitar players' parts, like different. Yeah, he isn't it band. annoying when people are like yeah. that? That they're like, like he's a great drummer too. He's a great singer. He like, it's really annoying when people have like a lot of really great skills and are able to do things that seem relatively effortless. I really yeah. uh, makes me real mad. Yeah, I've never been that guy. Yeah. I've, I've I've just had to like hammer it in the woodshed for way longer than what I imagine anyone else would have to do yeah. to, you know, stuff. Yeah. Some of us yeah. are Sidney Crosby's and we have to work to stay good. And some of us are Connor McDavid's and it just comes easy, but we're all amazing. We're all amazing. Yeah. Okay. We're all the amazing. best. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Wikipedia says that, um, <clears throat> The, the first be real good. release for Wilhelm, which even before you guys were called Wilhelm, was The Way to a Girl's Heart is Through Her Boyfriend's Stomach. And the reason that's the first real release is because it was where all the material included you on the record. Hmm. And so that made begs the question, uh, that means that without you, Wilhelm doesn't exist. Are you comfortable having that much responsibility on your shoulders? Well, I don't think that's true. But that's what <laughs> <Yes>. Wikipedia said. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, sometimes, well, hmm. Yeah, anyway, well, yeah, it's not true. I was on a record before that one. I was on a Smack and Isaiah record. Well, Smack and Isaiah, right. Yeah. So I'd like okay, to acknowledge um, that Fritzy yeah, I can, was... I can... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, after you. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I can, I, can, uh, I can handle the pressure, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like with a little bit of therapy and um, maybe some some marijuana gummies, <laughs> I'll get through. I'll get through the the pressure of having that on my my shoulders. Okay, good. Yeah. So I'd like to acknowledge that Fritzy was wrong. First of all, there. <laughs> and while he was wrong, he improperly used begs the question. I did. It's a very specific use of language that you can ask no question <laughs> after it. It just either begs the question or not. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately. So Fuck. not only did you uh, misspeak, but you also were wrong. Okay. Well, yeah, this, this is, could be the last, like, well, home screen member you'll have on your podcast this, ever. This too. is the last episode of the podcast ever. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so, yeah, I think it is. So, it's the no, last. My feelings, my feelings are so hurt right now for being called out on that that I, I, I'm quitting as soon as we're done. <laughs> But no, it will be the last Wilhelm Scream episode unless uh, anyone that we've already interviewed wants yeah, to do we'll it again. We'll go back around. Right, right. We'll go yeah, back around, right. yeah. yeah. For but sure. just no one else. Nobody else. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> even if, if previous members, like if Mike wants to do an episode, uh, 
he's welcome. Yep. Okay. But uh, no other current members that have no been other on yet. Are, uh, <laughs> uh, who's who's the best band in the history of Massachusetts? Ooh. Don't and don't say Aerosmith. Uh, I don't think I'd say Aerosmith. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Please go. Uh, the best band. Jeez, I don't know, man. That's a really hard question. I'll go with Tavaz. Okay. Yeah. What is that? They're like an R&B band, you know, and they, they used to wear the matching suits. Oh. You know, and oh, they okay. do the dance. They had like the, the, you know, the choreography. And uh, they had some hits. I can't remember what the hit is right now, though. But, um, yeah, they were, I'm going to go with them. I'm probably missing some other band that I really love, but I'm going to go with them because they're the oldest. Yeah, I was trying to think of other they're, bands. They're from New Bedford, too, right? Yeah. 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 I was looking up bands from Massachusetts, from New Bedford, because I wanted to see who else was from New Bedford, uh, yeah. and I remember seeing them. That uh, makes sense. I was trying to think of other bands from Massachusetts Boston? the whole time. Massachusetts? Bo- yeah. The band Boston? The band Boston's from Boston? Boston? Probably. I assume. That makes yeah. sense. I was thinking about Four Years Strong, Unearth. New Kids on the That's Block. That's all I got. New Kids yeah. on the Block? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boston Boys. Whew. I remember back in the day, they used to get beat up for being New Kids on the Block. <laughs> Guys would like, jump on stage and like they got beat up a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough spot to be from yeah. if you're going to be in like kind of a boy band. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of messed up, but... Yeah, that happened. Yeah, like some, like some real meatheads just were like, "New kids on the block suck," and I'm gonna go kick their ass. And they they did. New it. kids on the block aren't for me, and I'm gonna do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For you, you meathead. <laughs> um, uh, it's hilarious. Are there people in New Bedford who don't like to eat fish? Yeah, this this there's a lot. Is there? Yeah. I feel like in those sort of coastal communities it's just like sort of expected that you just like everybody loves seafood. Yeah. I can I can see that, but yeah, there is a lot of people that don't like fish. We do have we're like the biggest fishing port in the world, I think, and you get the freshest like we get some good stuff around here, you know. It probably still yeah. tastes like fish though. It does. Yeah. Yeah, that is the yeah. one drawback is it's so yeah. fresh that it tastes like fish. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big fan of shellfish myself, but I do eat it though. But I think that's just from being a tourist so much that you they just feed you all kinds of weird shit when you're when you're young and it's the only thing to eat. So you just eat anything. That mm-hmm. is the best segue <laughs> to the next question on my list, which is what's your favorite road food? Roadie oh, loves nice. vending machine chicken salad. Egg salad. Egg salad. <laughs> Vending machine v- egg salad, gas which is station worse egg somehow. Salad. That's a thing? That, that exists? Well, no. Like, just the egg salad sandwiches you get at gas stations. You know, like, uh, they come in that little paper package. Yeah. I love them. Okay. Disgusting. Right. I used to be, like, the roller hot dog guy. Oh, nice. Yeah. I haven't done that in a while, though. But that used to be my go-to, roller hot dogs. It's hard to be the roller hot dog guy as you get older. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The they really work your yeah. guts, especially with a no solids rule on the bus. Ooh, yeah. Well, yeah. Typically, it's not solid after those. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I used to do that. I used they used to um, I used to bring a, a lot of cans of tuna with me when we were really poor. So they and but the band would get really mad at me because I would open up my tuna can and then it would just you know it'd smell like tuna. It's very stinky. So, yeah, it's very. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not very nice to. Bust open a can of tuna in the van, you know? Oh. Yeah. Uh, not nice to bust open a can of tuna ever. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's not okay. I saw Tim, like, we were at an airport going somewhere, and, like, you could smell the fucking fish from meters away. Meters away. I'm going to stick with the <laughs> metric here. But uh, <laughs> we walked up and, like, saw him. He just had this, like, can. It wasn't tuna. It was just, like, fish bits. And he was just like eating it, sat down in the fucking like waiting for the plane with so many people around and people had like sweatshirts over their face, just like going like, what is this fucking guy doing? <laughs> wow. 
That's intense. Yeah. One time, one time, Nuno and I, we actually we brought a uh, we cooked some. You, you guys have spam in Canada? Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We we uh, had this. We brought like one of those uh, little cook stove things with us, and yep. And we uh, cooked up some spam in that truck stop one time. That ended up being really delicious for like for you know being in a trailer cook stove. Yeah. Get that I mean, that's brown on there. You know. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh yeah. That's yeah. pretty similar to like mm-hmm. a Newfie steak, right? Like uh, Newfoundland, they'll like fry bologna mm-hmm. and like you mm-hmm. can get it at the bar and it it's, like sounds stupid, but it is so good. Oh, fry bologna like, is good. Spam yeah, but, um, itself is really good, but if you like kind of burn it a little bit or just like fry it, I, I'm right. into it, dude. Yeah, yeah. I do like the uh, terrible meats. You know, I, yeah. I try to, I've, I've cut back over the years, like, like the roller hot dogs, you know, but. Yeah, I still, do, <laughs> I still do appreciate a fried spam sandwich on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> like that's an absolute tour treat, you know what I mean? Like just being on the road, making something fucking kind of weird to just like get sustenance. Yeah, yeah. you know, or like uh, we used to call them tour tacos, where you like you take like a flatbread kind of thing and you like smear hummus in it and then you just like crush chips inside it to be the meat yeah. and you just fold it up and like eat it. And it's just like, we got these like three things on the rider. So we're going to combine them and <laughs> try and make yeah, a that was dinner. The, the three it. things, potato chips, hummus <laughs> and, and flatbread. Yeah. It's yeah, we a, do like, something similar. We call them uh, tour d'oeuvres. Tour d'oeuvres. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I love how much you're going to the French. It's so good. <laughs> tour d'oeuvres is great. That is the best. Yeah. Especially because, like, in Canada, we pronounce tour a little differently. We, like, we go hard on that U in there. Tour. Oh, right. right? Yeah. So, with the American pronunciation specifically, tour d'oeuvres is fucking brilliant wordplay yeah very, yeah, very yeah good. good stuff we also uh, we had this idea to um oh, what was it? Oh, i'm gonna blank on this but we, we you know you get like a uh, meals and you like oh how many people are in your party or whatever so we uh we were gonna say that we had the driver and his name was uh, tony appetizer <laughs> 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 oh what does tony what, is, what did tony want so that way we get like an extra meal and we just get an appetizer and we, we call our <laughs> We call our guy Tony Appetizer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we always used to put a we always used to put a guy on the guest list. Like our tour manager, every day would be like, "We guys got a, got any list?" And every day we'd be like, "Yeah, there's a guy we need to get on there named Stuart uh, Stuart Pittman." And one day he was just sitting there going, "Stuart Pittman, Stuart Pittman. I think I know him, dude." And he goes, "Who is Stu Pittman?" <laughs> and Arv goes. <laughs> I think it's you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I've got uh, a game all set up for Ooh. us if you're ready. Yeah. Uh, so we, we play these little trivia games. Uh, and since your drum company is called Whale City and you also live in New Bedford, uh, the famous whaling town. I thought I would ask you some trivia about whales. Okay. Um, so the first question is, which, and it is multiple choice, uh, so you don't have to know the answer right off the top of your head. Which whale has the largest brain? Is it the blue whale, the killer whale, the sperm whale, or the humpback whale? Hmm. Uh, I'm not, I don't really know why, but I think I'm going to go with the sperm whale just because. Yeah, I you think know, you're right. You yeah. are. That's correct. Yeah. It is the sperm whale. All right. Um, this whale species sleeps standing up. They literally sleep like up and down in the water column instead of horizontal. They like go and Whoa. They sleep. So is it the blue That's- whale, the killer whale, the sperm whale, or the humpback whale? Ooh. I'm gonna go with with the humpback whale. That is incorrect, Rody. Oh, I figured I figured the hump would you know keep it listing yeah. or whatever you know. That's anyway. solid logic, and I was yeah. thinking the exact same thing. I'm yeah. gonna say the killer whale, even though they're kind of not whales, but they're assholes. Yeah. Nope. No, nope. it's the sperm whale. The sperm whale again. Yeah. 
tricky. Oh, this is all. Uh, this whale species <clears throat> battles with giant squids up to three thousand meters deep in the water. Mm. Is it the blue whale, the killer whale, the sperm whale, or the humpback whale? Jeez. Uh, I'm going to go killer on this one. Cheese? Because you've picked sperm whale twice, I'm going to say it's the sperm whale again. It is the sperm whale. Oh. <laughs> there are many, many instances of sperm whales uh, having scars and stuff from the, the fights with the giant squids. So that's uh, just assumption based. Just assumption. Like they've seen yeah. some scars well, no, on some they sperm have whales and been like, because then they find the, the the whale and they look inside the whale's guts and find like inside the whale is the squid. Oh, you okay. Know. Is that evidence though? Yeah. What does Joe Rogan say about it? Okay, <laughs> I only believe Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> if he's done the research and it comes back. Sperm whale? I'll believe it then. Uh, this whale species is responsible for the loudest sound created by a living thing on Earth. Sperm whale. Is it the blue whale, <laughs> the killer whale, the sperm whale, or the humpback whale? Ooh. I think the, the blue whales, they sound like, like loud whales to me. Because they got the blues, you know? They, yeah. Yeah. The logic is terrible. <laughs> Cheese? You know. I, I'm saying sperm whale. It is a sperm whale. Oh yeah, I've the sperm figured whale. out your pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> the sperm whale. Uh, the sperm whale has emitted clicks up to 230 decibels, which is louder than uh, the sound at the site of the atomic bomb. Uh, at 240 decibels, they say that uh, a sound at 240 decibels could literally explode your head. Oh, Whoa. so they are very, very loud. Are, is it the sperm whales in the one Star Trek movie where they nope. travel back in time? No, no that's time. the humpback whale. Shit. Yep. Mm. Um, you know a lot about whales. The last, the last question is why are you guys so obsessed with sperm? <laughs> Sick. C, sperm yes. whales. Final answer. Sperm. Yeah. Um, I'm going sperm whale on this one, too. Do you know why uh, <laughs> they're called <laughs> sperm whales, by the way? No. Because when they were, when the whalers would hunt them, they have like this, this organ inside their body that's filled with up to like 500 gallons of this goo. And the goo looks like... And that's what they thought when they would cut it open and all this goo would come out. They thought it was the whale's sperm. It's <laughs> not. It's like a, a fluid that they suspect they use for like uh, buoyancy in the water um, or, or echolocation. Uh, they're not exactly sure what it's for. So but you're that's telling why me they, they were like... They thought they it were was in the process. Sperm. They were in the process of like killing a fucking whale for yeah. like one of the first times, and they were like, "Oh my god, he's loving this! Look how much he's coming!" <laughs> <laughs> but like that's the stuff. Like the whaling industry was all about like getting that stuff because that's what they use for like oil lamps and all that stuff. Was the that oil uh, that they thought at first was whale sperm? Mm. So is that how they uh, they got? Like, uh, is that like how they use, what they use for artificial insemination to try to get ladies pregnant when they couldn't, you yeah, know? Yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah, but in that happened. case, it's artificial, but it's spelled F-I-S-H. You know what I mean? <laughs> artificial <laughs> insemination. <laughs> right. Whales are exactly. mammals. Yeah. Um, but so you just totally ruined all my uh, my whale street cred. You know, I am like the whale city guy from the whaling city, and I and I got every single one wrong. So. You got the first one right. <laughs> you got the first one right. One out of four ain't bad. Okay, right on. Right, well, you're hitting above the Mendoza go. line. That's true. I'm gonna have to go read some books after this. I think. I mean, I just googled interesting facts about sperm whales, and then just <laughs> wrote down all the the interesting things about sperm whales. There were four things. That's all there was. So, you you've heard them all. Now just go regale your friends with tales of the sperm whale. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll play it, sir. Okay, I also have a game. Oh fuck! Yeah, my game. <laughs> These is games really scare the shit out of me. And it's not multiple choice. 
So what I've done is I have put down some lyrics that are similar to uh, the lyrics of a real song. And you got to try and guess what song it is. Oh, no. Okay. So we're going to start off slow, and then we're going to go hard. (laughs) All right. The first song is, or the first lyric is, Working Out My Night Poop. Oh, I know this one. That would be uh, Night Moves. That's right. From uh, from my my town. Is that where he's from? He's from Ann Arbor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Next one is, Open Up Your Morning Bum and Say a Little Prayer for Cum. Ooh. (laughs) <laughs> is it that say a little prayer for me is it that song no i think it's no. uh uh open up your morning light say a little oh, prayer yeah, for yeah. Uh, if we are to yeah. stay alive da, 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 da. what is that song? our seed in every well, uh, that's paula cole oh, i don't want to wait cole. Uh, uh, from dawson's creek wait. oh right for right yeah time. To be over. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. And our final one, which is easily the hardest one. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing. I went 3.7 seconds inside a bull named Fu Manchu. <laughs> Wait, can you repeat? Inside you, a bull you, named you, Fu Manchu? Could you repeat that? I think I might know this one. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing. I lasted 3.7 seconds inside a bull named Fu Manchu. <laughs> I only changed two words in that one. <laughs> that's, that, that's, a, that's a country song, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the artist. That's Tim McGraw. It. I found it. Live Like You Were Dying. Uh, okay. You found it. Yep. And it was pretty close to the real lyrics, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Very. Pretty, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. You did it. You guys uh, together went two for three. He That's knew it, it was That's a country game. song. That means he knew the song. Three for three. He, gets he did it. it. We get the points. Yeah, I knew, the song was in my head, but I just didn't know. Like the I artist. went skydiving. It's <laughs> a bad song. Yeah. Catch I just was working out my night poop earlier, and I just wrote down <laughs> three quick spoofs. <laughs> oh, no. I, I just saw the I just saw the title of the of your gift, Rody. Yeah, it's gonna need some explanation. Yeah. So I think we're gonna move on to gifts, are yep. we, Fritzy? Yeah, but it's that time. So uh, yeah, it's gonna take some explanation. For the past three or four weeks, is yeah, it, Fritz? It's been it's been a bit. There's so I wrote a song. It's been more. It's been more. It was my son screaming about how he wanted to push Fritzy in front of a train. Um, and then Fritzy responded by getting a video of his mother to speak to my wife and say that her son was bullying Fritzy and that we need to come to some kind of, uh, agreement on, on how to end the strife here. Yeah. And this week's gift from me, uh, is my wife's response to Fritzy's mom. Oh no. She's really responding to Fritzy himself. (laughs) All right. I'm just going to play this. Mm-hmm. I'm very scared. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah. I also got a little carried away with the instrumentals. <laughs> hey, free cut.
Wow. That was That's impressive. <gasps> yeah, oh, everyone no. in my family can scream except for me, it turns out. <laughs> 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 And I went the other way. You went the other way? <laughs> I went the other way. Uh-oh. <sighs> Let's see what Fritzy's gift is here. You've texted it to me. Okay. So one of the lines in my son's song was, Choo-choo, buddy, it's the Hootie Express. Yeah, Hootie it's, is I want to push nickname. you in front of the train. Choo-choo, buddy, yeah. it's the Hootie Express. I'm only six years old, and I'm violent <laughs> as heck. And so I made an art. And Fritzy's created this which is like uh houston my son on a train aptly titled the hootie express it's a a beautiful picture that houston's gonna love i'm gonna save it i'm hoping it's gonna be his first tattoo (laughs) those are both really awesome gifts yeah i mean it's not like art and then like the art of being a song as well you know like that both like some serious time I don't know, man. That's that's tough. That's a tough one. I have to pick one, though, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I know who I would vote for. I wouldn't vote for me. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not going to vote for you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. That really wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the, just the intro of that song, you know? Yeah, that was yeah. heavy, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah I got carried and, away. Like, I didn't see that. I just, I just did not see that coming. That was, yeah, that was impressive. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm so proud of her. She did such a good job. Yeah, she really did. Oh God, now now I gotta do. I gotta <sighs> balls in your court. I have my a man. whole week to plan. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to plan. Uh-huh. You know what we haven't wait. done in a long time, Cheese. What's that? We haven't asked our guest. Who's the most famous person in your phone? Hmm. Um, I think she's, you know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Bill Stevenson, maybe. Yeah, that's what Trevor said too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's like punk rock famous. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I, he's famous to me yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I also got Byron from Pennywise too. I don't know which one's more Ooh. famous. That'd be. Uh, Probably, I think Bill's a little yeah. more. He's got more street cred anyway. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it's a bit of a coin toss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two absolutely legendary punk rock bands. Oh wait! I also got a, I got, I got a little Joe from RKO. Oh wow! I, uh, you got some. The first time I saw you guys was with Pennywise, I think. Yeah, probably. We've done a lot of touring with Pennywise. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, I don't know. One of those, I'd I'd say. Yeah. Did you ever tour with Pennywise when Jim wasn't in the band and they had that other guy? Oh yeah. Yep. Zoli wise. I never saw them with him. How was he? He was pretty good, but it was really strange because um, did you guys listen to Ignite back in the day? Little. Yeah, you know how like I don't know if you remember how he sang. He kind of like had a style, but mm-hmm. they, it seemed like they kind of like trained him to sing like Jim, and they like really yeah. made it. They really wanted him to sound like Jim and not like like Zoli. Because I kind of dug Ignite back in the day, and I was kind of like excited to see. Like what they sounded like, Pennywise, Pennywise yeah. would sound like with him, with, yeah, yeah, with the Zoli Zoli voice. So, yeah, he was a, hmm. he was quite the character. Yeah. Him and him and uh, and Fletcher would always go at it at the at like the catering every day. It was kind of <laughs> it would have been quite the um, reality television show. The Zoli was like a, a like a like a vegan straight edge vegan kind of guy, and Fletcher is just the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, and they're both these big giant. Dudes and with big personalities, and they would just kind of like go, they'd go at each other every day, just like digging on one another, like totally, like 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 bad, just just trying to like cut the other one down, like real hard. Yeah, it was, that's it was, so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just sitting there watching this like little bit of sort of punk rock history unfold before you. Yeah, yeah, and then like Jim came back in the band, and they, it seems like they tried to like scrub it from history that was only was actually in the band. It's like. Don't don't, yeah. don't don't mention it, you know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I mean, Pennywise without Jim is like he's so specific, right? Like the sound of his voice is so specific that it's like, I get why you try and continue if he doesn't want to do it, but it's not quite Pennywise. Yeah, totally. Tough to switch out a lead singer. <laughs> 
in any band, yeah, I guess. That's hard. Oh, yeah. Unless yeah, you're Van impossible. Halen. <laughs> right. That's kind of true. Mm. I mean, that's one band in history that's changed their fucking lead singer and like like, a bajillion it worked times. out for everyone, for the most part. Yeah. Actually, you know what? There's that band. Uh, I don't really like them very much, but they're from like Peterborough, Ontario. They're called uh, Three Days Grace. Oh, yeah. You know that? They switched their singers and nobody even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> I didn't notice. But then again, yeah. I don't think I would even be able to recognize one of their songs. I bet you'd be able to recognize two of them and they, they would probably be different singers and you'd go... How are th- how are those different people? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like their one was the I hate everything about you. Ooh. And then oh, you must know that one. You yeah, got you know, know that, that one. one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's hard to yeah. escape it. Right. And I can't I can't think of another if I'm honest. <laughs> oh, I know the let's start a riot. And that's oh. all I can think of from that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I know that one. I don't know one. that one. I don't know that yeah. I know. See, bands that came out like during that era, I don't know about because I stopped learning about new music. Uh, like yeah, but 19, that's like stuff that like you're in the grocery store and you are fucking witness to it. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. You used to call that kind of music, uh, you used to call that cop rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or Pop butt rock. rock. Mm-hmm. Butt rock. Yeah. Totally. It stinks like ass. <laughs> <laughs> or for your example, it stinks like cock. Right. Oh. <laughs> it's a different kind of stink, yeah. but stink nonetheless. Same right. general part of the area of the body. Yeah. yeah, they were they were cock rock with their original singer and then they sort of transgressed to uh butt rock. Butt rock. So they're gonna be Besh Rock next. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's it. Yeah, is that it? Go out. Cheese, do you have anything else? I think that's all I got. Unless you got something you want to say, Nick. Um, I don't know. Should what should I say? Well, generally we end the episode. Yeah. With our guest, uh, saying who they are, what they've just been listening to. And uh, to tell the fans to eat shit and go fuck themselves. Um, okay. So up to and you. you can put your own spin on eat shit and go fuck yourself. It. Or and you can just say eat shit and just, go fuck yourself. Or you can just say, I don't feel comfortable saying that to people I don't know. And I prefer to say, um, have a wonderful night. And that would be fine, too. Okay. So like the last thing I was listening to before I got here? No, just like what this, this is podcast, the hero. You've been listening to podcast, the hero. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Like, you know. Right on. Okay. So I shouldn't plug this it is all the part of the episode. You know, I mean, if you want to plug what you've been listening to, I'm totally happy to do it. Cause I think that's great. Well, I literally, um, listen, I was, I was driving a, a beer delivery truck today for 11 hours. I was on a road before we started. And I listened to a whole season of a podcast. It wasn't this one. Oh. It was a different one. Oh. Yeah. You can so plug another you know, podcast on our podcast. No, huh? don't. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave everybody in suspense. <laughs> if they really want to know, if they can, they can, they can uh, try to contact me. Yeah, email it yeah. to us, and then we'll tell the listeners next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. So, my name is Nicholas Pasquale Angelini. And uh, you've been listening to the uh, Protest the Podcast podcast. And um, eat shit and go fuck yourself. See?